Well, unfortunately, I guess you can say this is where Jurassic Park really lost its way. <laughs> What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel and another installment in my Jurassic Park review series where I talk all the Jurassic Park movies in the lead up to Jurassic World Dominion. And today we're talking about the second movie, The Lost World Jurassic Park. So before we begin, let me know in the comments what your thoughts on this movie were, if you already saw it, or if you're planning on seeing it. And make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you like these reviews as it helps me out immensely by getting my content out there. And if you're new here, I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with more movie related content like the rest of this review series on a near daily basis. But let's not waste any more time and let's talk about the Lost World Jurassic Park. This sees a research team sent to the Jurassic Park Site B Island to study the dinosaurs there, while an in-gen team approaches with another agenda. So as I do with all my other retro reviews, this will get into spoiler territory. So if you haven't seen the Lost World Jurassic Park by now and you wish to know nothing, this is your spoiler warning. Go watch the movie, then come back to this. But now that you've been warned, here we go. This is the only other film in this franchise directed by Steven Spielberg, and it's also the only other film to be based on a Michael Crichton novel, though Crichton himself did not return to co-write the screenplay, and this takes considerably more liberties with the story than the first movie did with the original novel. And it only sees the return of some of the main cast from the first movie. Jeff Goldblum's back as Ian Malcolm in the main role, while Richard Attenborough is also back as Hammond, with Joseph Mazzello and Ariana Richards also returning as his grandchildren Tim and Lex, though the latter three are just in cameo appearances. Now, unlike the first Jurassic Park, which I absolutely loved, I don't quite hold as much nostalgia for this movie. In fact, I think of the original trilogy, this is the one I saw the least. Though, fun fact, it's actually the first movie theater experience I specifically remember. Maybe not the first movie ever that I definitely saw in theaters, but it's my first movie theater memory. And that consisted of me having to leave halfway through this because I was crying and scared, so good times. But either way, when it came to rewatching Jurassic Park movies, it was always either the first or the third movie. And outside of a few sequences here and there, I really didn't remember much about this one, which I always found weird considering it's the only other Spielberg directed movie in the franchise, and I generally love a lot of Spielberg movies. But when it comes to the actual fan base of Jurassic Park, People are pretty divided on this. While I think everyone agrees no matter what it is a step down from the first movie, some see it as one of the better sequels in the franchise, while others view it as nothing more than a disappointment, even if it's not terrible. And after having rewatched this for this review, I have to say I unfortunately fall into the latter camp. Not only is this a major downgrade from the classic first movie, but it's one of the only Spielberg movies I find myself not particularly wanting to really go back and watch again anytime soon. Now to be clear, it's not terrible. I think there are some commendable things about this. Once again, Jeff Goldblum's always a welcome sight to see as Ian Malcolm. The supporting cast is all solid with additions like Vince Vaughn, Julianne Moore, and in easily the most compelling role, Pete Postlewaite as Roland Tembo, the hunter who leads the initial expedition and is an antagonist throughout the movie, but actually has this compelling enough arc where he comes to terms with his own hand in the destruction. And going along with all that, the dinosaur action is pretty solid. There aren't as many iconic moments as the first movie, but there are sequences like the ones where the dinosaurs rip Richard Schiff in half, or where we get the sequence in San Francisco later on in the movie where the kid says there's a dinosaur in his backyard. And all that looked pretty impressive as per usual. There's definitely an increased use of CGI to create the dinosaurs with some animatronics thrown in there. But for the most part, like the first movie, it didn't look dated or cheap. And when we got that dinosaur action, I was entertained enough. But what makes it frustrating is that Whenever we didn't focus on those moments, the story and characters are pretty weak, and it would be to the point of sometimes distractingly bad. Not to the point where it caused me to hate this movie or anything, but there were times where characters would be standing around talking, and it would just take me right out of the moment because of just how disjointed it all felt. On top of the delivery, sometimes would either feel wooden or weirdly over the top. But with the latter, characters wouldn't say anything inherently funny, it's just that they'd say something you're supposed to take seriously in a way that just did not match up with how the line should be delivered. And the writing for the characters themselves rang emotionally hollow for me. While Jeff Goldblum's performance is great as always, Malcolm is a considerably less interesting character here than he was in the first movie, being stripped of 
all his quirks that made him such a blast to watch. While we were able to take him seriously in the first movie, it's also because he had such a distinct personality, yet that feels totally removed here. Instead, we just get this pretty generic storyline for him that involves him trying to find his girlfriend Sarah, played by Julianne Moore, along with trying to protect his daughter Kelly, played by Vanessa Lee Chester, who sneaks on board the mission and attempts to help out. Though, there's also nothing meaningful explored with any of their relationships, outside of some occasional wooden bickering that felt a little repetitive and borderline shoehorned in as an attempt to just add some extra conflict. And while I appreciate the film trying to add more to Malcolm's character, it felt like it only still scratched the surface when it came to these little subplots. So there was really nothing to be gained from all this extra material. And not only did it make the movie feel considerably bloated, despite running at just about the same length as the original, but it just made it feel emotionally hollow. You bring up all these storylines and then really do nothing with them other than just the occasional argument. So there's really not much depth there. And while the main thing you go to a Jurassic Park movie for is to see dinosaurs on the loose, don't forget, the first movie also explored weighty topics like man vs nature, trying to play god, letting things take their course, and it did so through characters that all had very distinct personalities. Now, The Lost World touches upon that stuff, and for that I can't say it's at least a commendable effort, but at the same time, it never actually has anything insightful to say on said topics, and it feels just like a generic monster movie with new characters who aren't as interesting or their returning characters who are stripped of any real death that they once had. And it just loses a little bit of that sense of fun that the original had. I mean, both stories are ones that you're supposed to take completely seriously, but with the first movie, there's also a sense of wonder and awe and you get this sense of enjoyment of seeing these characters be amazed at seeing all these dinosaurs for the first time and there'd be all these quirky interactions. And it also knew how to explore meaningful themes while also keeping things to the point. And not that I want to make this entire review based around a comparison, but it's important to understand what made the original Jurassic Park work to see why the Lost World stumbles. This story is considerably darker than the first, without nearly as much of the fun beyond seeing the dinosaurs in action, and even that's lessened due to the fact that most of it's shot at night where it's a bit more difficult to really take everything in. And while you want emotional weight, a self-serious tone without much of a shred of any other emotion only gets you so far. Now I know there are those who like their movies that have this darker, more overly serious tone to them, and that's where I think this movie does have its fan base for just how gritty it can feel, but I've said this countless times before, you need a balance in emotion so that it just doesn't feel like the movie's constantly beating you down. And while I don't think this hits depressing levels of self-seriousness, it certainly doesn't feel like it made much of an effort for most of its runtime to explore much beyond being so dark. Now, I think it bounces back from that a little bit in its final act, when the action shifts to San Francisco and we shift to a King Kong Godzilla-like storyline with a T-Rex rampaging through the city. And I think this is actually the more interesting part of the movie, but at the same time, I still wouldn't say it completely saves the movie, mainly because of just how off the structure of it all feels. For some it will, but for me, it felt too little too late. Because while it's the most entertaining aspect, it also feels tacked on rather than a natural progression of events from the stuff on the island. Because keep in mind, this part of the movie starts up in like the last 30 minutes after you had this complete story of everything happening in Isla Sorna. And the way we move off the Isla Sorna stuff, it's as if the movie's about to wrap up. And you honestly could have stopped the film right there and cut to the very last scene with Hammond giving a press conference about everything that happened. And while it still wouldn't have made for a great movie, it would have felt like a natural conclusion to the story. But with the sudden cut to San Francisco, which keeps the movie going for like another 25 minutes or so, it just feels awkward. It's entertaining on its own for sure, and I wish the movie had that fun for its first hour and a half, but it doesn't make for a totally cohesive movie, especially as not even all the characters who survived Isla Sorna take part in this. Some of them just disappear outside of Malcolm and Sarah. So again, going back to the film's general characterizations and their arcs, it just 
didn't feel emotionally satisfying in that department. And on one last note, I also found the way they got everyone to the island to be a little forced, in particular the way it happened with our protagonist. I mean, I get that part of the story is how Hammond's nephew is sending people to Isla Sorna to exploit the dinosaurs there, and while I get that Hammond himself sent Malcolm, Sarah, and everyone else there was to show how people shouldn't interfere any further with nature, and in a way that shows Hammond having learned his lesson from Jurassic Park, I still just find it hard to believe he'd be that careless to now once again send another group of people to an even more dangerous island after having seen what previously happened to the quote unquote safe island and he came to terms with his own failure. Especially with one of those people being Malcolm who's clearly traumatized from the first movie's events. Even if he does eventually agree to go because Hammond asked someone close to him to already go and he wants to keep her safe, considering how little it took him to eventually get back on board with this, it just didn't seem like all too convincing of a setup to me. The Lost World Jurassic Park is certainly made better due to it being handled by Spielberg, who manages to give us some thrilling enough action scenes that make it sporadically entertaining. However, the film is still a major step down from the first movie. It lacks all the wonder and awe that should go with a movie like this, as well as its sense of fun, instead going for a much less enjoyable, self-serious tone outside of a final act that felt tacked on and still felt too little too late. And it contains new characters who lack a distinct personality while also stripping all of its returning characters of the charm that made us really enjoy them. While this does have its audience, it just didn't work for me overall and it's nothing I'm looking to particularly revisit. The Lost World Jurassic Park gets a 5.5 out of 10. So stay tuned, as up next will be my review of the final film in the original run, Jurassic Park 3. And in the meantime, let me know, did you see The Lost World, or are you planning to see it, and what were your thoughts? Is this your favorite of the sequels, and how does it compare to the novel? Let me know in the comments below so we can discuss. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and share it, and for more movie reviews and film discussion, please make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated. Thanks for watching everyone, and keep having fun with film.